Hi, thanks for joining. I hope you're doing well. So today's video is going to be about how to read a timing report, how to understand it better for a flop to flop timing path. So very quickly, um, just to give you an idea what I'm, I've been doing so far, very quickly, uh, because these different topics that I'm bringing, I'm not bringing them randomly. I'm, I'm going with the sequence and it's important that you understand that too. So I started on physical design overview, then I went into synthesis overview, of, oh, sorry, over, um, overview, the entire flow of uh, design uh, synthesis and design compiler. Uh, then the earlier part was reading Verilog and then um, reading constraints. So reading constraints, timing, area, sorry, timing, floor plan and power super important <coughs> and then from them i started with timing constraints okay uh, from the timing constraints i went into okay if a path is unconstrained how to figure out a path is constrained or not um, and then i look a few examples of uh, unconstrained flop to flop paths and constraints input path output path there's another path feed through which i will look into as well and now, after looking at some of the paths, so you're familiar with, okay, what are the things uh, important in a timing path? What are the things that tool calculates as part of required and arrival time? Okay. The next thing I feel best uh, for that sequence is how to read a timing report. Now, reading timing report definitely comes a bit later on. It's part of the analysis overall in, in the flow, right? When tool is done with all its optimizations then you look at okay how what's the quality of the netlist what's the quality of the database from the timing point of view you already applied some constraints um, and then you read them but i think even right now at this stage um, you, it's important okay what are how is a timing path uh, look like because we already look at uh, some of the some of the timing path examples and this is important also how a fully constrained timing path looks like and when we read a timing report. So I'm intentionally bringing it a little bit earlier and hopefully this will be very, very useful. So what I'll do is today's video is flop to flop timing path. Next will be input output and then I will look at a feed through timing report. So hopefully a lot of things inside the timing report will come. So let's get started. So I typically someone comes for an interview on timing uh, one of my favorite question is okay i gave the person a timing report and asked the person okay let's go through this and then i start asking question so i think you you can think it of if somebody understand a timing report different aspects um, aspects of it then that's really good sign the person understands timing and you will see that I can go very deep into the timing report, but let's see, let's see. I haven't planned it, um, but let's get started. So this timing report that I generated is, is for this timing path over here. I created a schematic and I already told you different components of arrival and record time. You can look at those videos that I did previously. Okay, now let's get started with the timing report. And then you will see, okay, different components that I've already put in the equation here will come here, but in a different format. It doesn't matter. Okay. So a typical timing report inside static timing analysis tools such as prime time, and then inside IC compiler or DC compiler or the latest from Synopsys fusion compiler, they come about similar. Um, those are the tools I'm more familiar with. So if you are using this, some cadence tools, timing tool, maybe they're similar. I, I don't know. I, I never look into those. But uh, maybe it's, it's a very standardized format. Let's get started. So start point. Now start point, I already mentioned. And by the way, this report I generated from uh, chat GPT. Um, it didn't give me a good report right away. Uh, but after a few prompts, I improved it and I feel maybe I'll find something uh, and here away uh, here right away I'm seeing something I think I think um, it should give me a 
lock pin name head as opposed to Q for a flip flop. But maybe I'll look into a proper timing report and then, then we'll tell you. But I think this is wrong too. But so it's good. If it's wrong, I will fix it. So first thing is, I think this is CK. My pin's name is CK. Okay. So timing report always start. What is a start point and what is end point? This is FF1 CK and it ends on FF2 D pin over here. right path group this is the clock on which it's captured so here is the thing with path group and that's an important concept and it's good that some of these things come because otherwise I'll, I'll forget about those um, where am I so path group oops too big um, it's okay um, so every time so let's say you have five clocks in your design okay uh, for every timing path tools uses the capture clock as a path group so if you have five different clocks then overall category of the paths will be divided into those five different clocks now there could be like 100 flops on this where different flops are captured under the same clock then that means all those paths will be under that clock group and within each clock group the way tool does is uh, so you have let's say uh, this clock group clock one gigahertz there will let's say there were 100 flip-flops okay all over the design each one has some start point maybe similar start point or different unique something like that so the way tool keeps the information in its in the memory in its database okay it says that okay there is one path group and within that path group it has it knows the slack and we'll get to the slack and we discussed the slack which is different between record time minus arrival time so based on a path group it kind of keeps that information and whenever you report them the worst path in that group is reported first from the uh, the slack worst slack path is reported first then after that after that so all the paths do exist but sometimes in, in terms of reporting you can yeah, you can report in such a way that by default it will only report the worst path in order to get the slacks for more paths you there are commands like dash max path or n n worse those type of switches um, by the way i forgot to tell you that report timing is the command that is used to get this timing path and this command has different switches as i said it has n worse max paths I think N worse is the one I always forget and I always look into the man manual pages. But uh, N worse is maximum N points per path group to report. And max path is maximum paths per N point. I always kind of confuse some switch between what I said, but doesn't matter. You can always look at those commands. You don't need to memorize those things. Understand that? So you understand what the path group is? It's by default, is by default, each clock has uh, each clock gets a path group with it and by default only one path is reported and that's the worst path in that group and then using switches you can report more paths now question is can you create your own path groups you can you create different categories as opposed to the default one let's say there is a special logic um, and within that logic you have 50 flip flops and all those are very critical ones okay so what you can do is there is a command uh, you can do create path groups so you can create some targeted path groups okay in that case if this was that belongs to that 
that targeted path group then what tool is going to do is going to take it out of this and put in the other one so question is why you want to do that you want to do that for two reasons and again i wasn't planning on talking all this but it's just coming i think it's important these are very important things so path group um, advantages first one is for reporting right you can always do report timing and you can say groups and when you created this create path group you can give a name um, that's a call critical my group and then you can say from for example a pin dash to pin we will do some labs on it so i think will be clear so using this you create this group when you do report <coughs> report timing <coughs> i'm sorry you can mention that group uh, critical let's call my group and then it will report only that one so reporting makes easier and we do a lot of custom reporting too um, so that instead of going through the default report we can always if i am really concerned about this how tool has optimized this one then i can right away report that one and start looking into first another benefit of that one is optimization creating path groups is a very important technique for um, for optimization and how does it work is by default so in a similar way i told you how reporting works when tools like design compiler synthesis or place and route tools when they work on when they pick a certain timing path for optimization they pick the worst path in a particular group and then they try okay it's buffer needs to be maybe a better drive strength or maybe we need to optimize this logic instead of two sides we get one okay this guy is already tied to zero what's the point of putting our gate here right uh, we can do a buffer and what or some other thing what's the point of putting an end gate and you just tying it one basically you what, what are you doing so it can simplify a lot of that lo type of logic so because it knows that okay that's my worst path and i need to work on it so the way it works is it will pick the worst path in each path group optimize it once it's optimized it will move on to the next one optimize move on to the next one next one next one there is a range of slacks that would typically so it's very good bringing slacks to zero but if cannot work on it it'll move to the next one so it's very important during optimization that you expose your most critical paths to the tool what you don't want is there is a um, there is a path but its report timing somehow is messed up that the slack is actually very bad but it's not a valid bad right and the valid bad is somewhere buried deep into that path group you don't want that you want to expose that really critical one to the tool right away so that is the other way of by creating a path group since tool work on based on path groups that's really important to have that those path groups during optimization you can set priority you can set critical range critical range is for a path group what is the uh, range of slacks that you really want tool to keep going keep going don't stop it sometime tool has to work on uh, runtime um, area power timing compromise it has a lot of conflicting constraints and sometimes it may not work on a path even though you think that it was it should work on that and the more help you can give tool by exposing some of those critical paths for optimization the better it would be for you and i in my career i played a lot with path groups and it those things have really worked very well so strongly suggest to get familiar with path grouping and how to use them effectively during optimization after you set up constraint and those will also be very useful later on for reporting 
let's stop it here i didn't um plan to make this video more path group but i think that was an important topic to talk about so we will continue um tacking the rest of the uh, timing path in the future videos okay see you bye